welcome back. We're in the book of Exodus. We are today in verses 31 to 37 of chapter 29 in the book of Exodus. And onward we read, You shall take the ram of ordination and boil its flesh in a holy place. Aaron and his son shall eat the flesh of the ram and the bread that is in the basket at the doorway of the tent of meeting. Thus they shall eat those things by which atonement was made at their ordination and consecration, but a layman shall not eat them because they are holy. If any of the flesh of ordination or any of the bread remains until morning, then you shall burn the remainder with fire. It shall be not be eaten because it is holy. Thus you shall do to Aaron and to his sons according to all that I have commanded you. You shall ordain them through seven days. Each day you shall offer a bull as a sin offering for atonement, and you shall purify the altar when you make atonement for it, and you shall anoint it to consecrate it. For seven days you shall make atonement for the altar and consecrate it. Then the altar shall be most holy, and whatever touches the altar shall be holy. Okay, so... Again, we have this emphasis, this is going to be seven days long, dealing with the altar, dealing with the priest, and wearing the garments, you know, seven days in a row uh, for this ritual when it happens each day. Uh, this is a continua continuation, as I, I called it the other day, uh, probably not the best theological language, but this kind of blob of ordinations, this sequence, this ritual that contains these seven days in a row consecutive offerings and happening. Boy, you know, after five, day five, day six, day seven, you're not only kind of getting into the flow of things, but you're, you're, it's becoming more fixed in your mind. This is, a, this is a precious privilege that God is giving me to serve in the priesthood. Interesting piece here about the, the uh, flesh that remains, like if they eat some and there's some left over. This doesn't go in the fridge, you know, or be passed out to strangers or anything like that. Uh, this is consecrated. Once it's been consecrated to God, whatever's left over, it's destroyed uh, it's not continued. It's destroyed if it, if it goes any longer. We kind of do the same thing, most of us today, uh, certainly in, in my church, uh, when we deal with the Lord's Supper. Any of the emblems, we consecrate the emblems, the, the unleavened bread, the, the unfermented wine. We consecrate that to the Lord. We distribute it. We all eat it together. We have the Lord's Supper, sort of the communion meal. Uh, but then what do we do with what's left over? Well, we often take some, but we put it in, in kits and we take it to some of our older folks or people who might have a health issue. They're in a shut-in situation. We will, the elders will take that and have separate communion with them wherever they are. But if there's some left over, what do we do with that? Well, we burn it, we destroy it. It's consecrated to the Lord. It's not something extra that you put in the fridge and then you just kind of chow down on at a later time. No, this has been set apart. It's been prayed over. It's been consecrated. So we destroy what's left over. That's based really on this on this kind of a, a this this text right here, this idea of whatever is holy to the Lord, we don't mess with it. So tomorrow, let's carry on a bit further.